Welcome to Database Concepts and Fundamentals. Uh, this is Lesson 1, an introduction to the course. And I am Bob Dust. Here's a picture of me. So um, I'll be uh, walking you through this and be an instructor for the course. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So let's go over some of the learning objectives we'll be doing for the course. Um, so in summary, after com successfully completing this learning objective, you will be able to discuss the value that data has in our lives and the important role that it plays. Explain three of the four important values that are achieved by data modeling <coughs> and describe what we plan to learn in this course. Now, this, this is just a little tutorial that gets you started. In um, Blackboard, you'll see more in-depth knowledge about the learning objectives for the course, this lesson, and it will be your collaboration tool throughout this course. So be sure to be familiar with how Blackboard works. All right. I really need for you to read the syllabus. Uh, there's some important information in there, stuff that we need to know, uh, how the grading is done, the agenda, the layout, what we're going to do in this course, and the rules that we have. So read the syllabus, and at the end, there's actually a quiz on the syllabus. So uh, take it seriously, take your time to read it. All right, so do we need data? Think about it. Uh, Back before the 1960s, uh, I'm old enough to remember that. You probably are not, but I am. Uh, we got out and fine without much data. World existed. We got out. Things happened. Uh, sun came up. Lights came on. TVs worked. Radios worked. Uh, telephones worked. Uh, things were going great before we had much data. Now, uh, back in uh, 2016, not too far long ago, in the USA alone, we were generating over two and a half million gigabytes of data per minute. That's a lot of data. Awful lot of data. Uh, so in fact, we captured so much data that we are running out of words to measure it by. I mean, literally. A Yoda byte is the uh, highest measurement we have now for data, and that is a one with 24 zeros behind it. So uh, we're running out of names to call our data. We capture so much of it. So the question is, do we need that much data? Good question. Uh, like I said before, we didn't have it. Uh, businesses wish they had the data, uh, but they go along without it. I was saying, Dad used to tell me yesterday's wishes are today's needs, and that's true. Uh, now that we have all this data, uh, we tend to use it in some uh, rather interesting ways, which we'll see later in this course. Old business axiom, cash is king. He who has the cash rules, they will go to rule kind of. Uh, that's changing. That's changing. Now the rule is, how the business has them is, data is king. For example, there's a company called Travelocity. You may have heard of them. A few years ago, I don't know if it's true or not, I should have looked this up. But a few years ago, uh, Travelocity has a net worth greater than all of the airlines combined, all the U.S. airlines combined. A greater net worth of all the, than all the U.S. airlines combined. Now think about it. Travelocity has no airplanes. They have no hotels. No rental cars, no resorts, 
Nothing. Nothing. But they do have one thing. They have data about airplanes, rental cars, and hotels and resorts. The value of that data is greater than all the airlines combined. So, question comes. That's an awful lot of data we're collecting. Two and a half million gigabytes a minute. Where does that come from? Well, back in the 1960s, it used to come from people punching code into uh, key crunch machines and other uh, manual devices. Today comes from you and you and all of us. As we go about our lives, driving to work, school, or home, we generate data. Every time you enter a store and that sort of store, you're generating data. Uh, University of Missouri has a new system where every student, faculty, and staff member is issued a badge. So that badge allows you to enter uh, classrooms, labs, buildings, depending on who you are. You don't have to have a key because it gets you into your dorm and gets you into your uh, cafeteria, bookstore, uh, your classrooms, your instructor um, doesn't have to take attendance. They can tell if you're there or not. Pretty elaborate system. And we'll get back to that a little bit later. But think about this. So every, a lot of data being generated just by students, faculty, staff walking around the campus at the University of Missouri. It's also connected to their bus line. So um, that's your pass to get on and off the bus. Um, as you can imagine, they collect a lot of data doing that. You ever think about uh, uh, you go to Google Maps or Google um, Waze and they see a lot of the traffic and all that? How is that generated? Generated by Google tracking how fast Android devices are moving on the road. So the closer they are together and the slower they move, Google can tell what the traffic situations are and they update their maps in real time. You would think it might be someone sitting by the side of the road or some device just watching, but it's not. They use uh, Android devices on your, that you have in your phones. An interesting uh, way that data is captured. So, where does that data go? Who uses all this data? With two and a half million gigabytes a minute, who's using this? Good question. Businesses use it, obviously. Uh, of course, you can imagine the government's using it for their purposes. The question is, for what end? Well, we like to think it's to um, uh, improve improve our user, or improve, how businesses would improve so they can serve our, their consumers, their customers better, and for consumers to have a better experience, uh, to watch for trends so they can uh, see when things are hot and not hot. Uh, but the downside is, hey, you know what? This can get a little creepy. Maybe University, University of Missouri? Think about it. Not only do they know students when they get on campus and when they enter the classroom and they enter the classroom, they uh, could know who they're associating with. They know who their friends are. They know... Um, and because it's tied to bus lines and uh, other devices, they know when it kind of where they get off at. Uh, so they can capture all the data. They can maybe analyze the data to see if uh, uh, what the patterns are between successful students and non-successful students. This is the people they hang out with. This is where they're going. How long they're at the library. Uh, how long they eat lunch. What they have for lunch. Uh, a lot of data. Um, other people collect data too. Probably more data 
than what they use. Imagine going to a uh, restaurant. I don't know, it's, it's using a restaurant. So you go to a restaurant, and uh, it's possible that when you walk in the door, they know who you are. It would be a little bit creepy if the waitress came up to you and said, uh, Hey, how's your kids? How's Laura and Joe and Laura Sue? How they doing? You go, wow, how do you know their names? It's starting to scare me here. Uh, how's your car doing? How's you got a new car? I mean, they have a lot of data. Airlines capture data. They probably know what you, uh, what seats you like, where you, uh, what uh, beverages you have. Matthew Stewart is saying, uh, or the, what they call flight attendant, saying, uh, um, hey, you want you want the same thing you had last flight? Remember when you flew to St. Louis, you want the same thing? They probably have that data, they probably are not using it for that end, but it's kind of creepy to think what they could be doing with it. Not trying to scare you, but uh, that's the reality. All right, so we have data. Data is just a bunch of bits and bytes that we store in the computer somewhere. So the question is, is data the same as information? The answer is, no, it's not. So we collect data to provide information. Data by itself is just data. It doesn't tell us anything. But once we aggregate it and analyze it and look at it and dissect it and move it around and combine it, we now start to provide information from the data that we have collected. So while we, after we provide the information, collect this information, what happens then? Well, if we're smart, we'll collect that information and we'll provide knowledge. Where should we um, open new plants, for example? Should we close plants? Should we uh, offer new product lines? Should we cancel bad product lines? So we take information and we convert it to knowledge by processing things. And after we uh, provide enough knowledge, uh, collect enough knowledge, that leads to wisdom. Now we can start saying, ah, we were really smart to move into that market when we did. Why? Because you have the data, provide the information, information provide the knowledge, and the knowledge then provide the wisdom to take actions. So we could say, source of all wisdom comes from data. It all starts with the data. So data turns into information, Information turns into knowledge, and knowledge turns into wisdom. So, for all this to work, for all this to work, our data has to be solid. So we're going to look at several things in this course. We say, is the data complete? In other words, do we have all the data that we need? We're not missing data, are we? Is the data consistent? So if I have uh, uh, sales of $100 here and somewhere else it's $200, once, if, if it's inconsistent, then I start questioning the validity of the data. You want to make sure it's complete, it's consistent, and that it is accuracy, accurate. So, is data accuracy important? How accurate is good enough? How about, oh, 90%, 95%, 98%? 98 percent is pretty good, isn't it? Sure, unless that data is about me or you, right? I mean, I don't want to go to the doctor and have that 2% bad data be mine. I will go to the bank and have that 2% bad data be mine, where they say I have less funds than what I should have, or the doctor says, oh, you need an operation when I don't. So 98% may not be good enough. Would you be content if 98% of your bank data was accurate? Your health data? How about air traffic controllers? If they're capturing air traffic 
uh, information and one plane out of 50 is out of place and they don't know about it, that's not quite good enough, is it? Speaking of uh, air traffic, you know what NORAD is? NORAD is the North American Air Defense System. Their job is to monitor all uh, inbound, that's outbound and internal flights in North America, United States and Canada. They're watching blips on the screen all day and all night long. And they're making sure every blip on that screen is supposed to be there. If a blip is on the screen, it's not supposed to be there. They got to figure out, is this an incoming missile? Is it a renegade flight? What's going on? They cannot afford to be wrong because if, <clears throat> if they detect the missiles coming in, their job is to blow it out of the sky. If they're wrong and that incoming missile is actually a commercial airline, they can't afford to be wrong. The 98% is really not a good number when it comes to data. Um, the question becomes, can we have 100% accuracy? Uh, I'm going to leave that for you to ponder. Um, just be aware that when we're close but not there, bad things can happen. Um, so be aware, can that happen? Can we have 100% data accuracy? Uh, the question probably comes, can we afford it? How much does it cost us to have 100% accurate data? Uh, and what's the value of that? What's the value of not having 100%? So some tough questions. Uh, we won't cover that much in this course, but just be aware that uh, data accuracy is quite important. All right, data contest. Number 3.5, is that a good number? What do you think? Good number, bad number? Should be higher? Should be lower? What does it mean? I don't know, 3.5 what? Inches of rain per hour? Wow, that's a lot of rain. Inches of rain per year? Wow, that's not much rain at all. Um, we don't know what it means. 3.5 uh, days before the world explodes? Wow, that's not good at all. So, not knowing what 3.5 means, it means nothing. So we have to put it in some kind of context. So let's say 3.5 is means GPA, grade point average. That means you got about half B's and half A's. That's, that's pretty good, right? 3.5, but still not enough. 3.5 GPA for who? Who? I don't know. Well, now we say, oh, it's Sue's GPA. So now we know the entity is Sue, and the 3.5 means GPA. Now we can understand what that number means. We know it means GPA, and we know it means GPA for a particular student. Okay, so for a data point to have meaning, we have to know what the attribute is, in this case, GPA, and we have to know what is the entity. In this case, it's the student, Sue. All right, so let's turn our attention to World War III. Imagine waking up one day and the lights are not on. Already a bad day, right? So you um, turn on your remote radio. Doesn't work. Turn on your cell phone. Doesn't work. Turn on uh, anything. Nothing is working. You go to your car. You go down, drive down to the bank. Banks are closed. 
You go to uh, the gas station. There's no pumps. Pumps are not working. No electricity, right? Traffic lights are out. Everything is grinding to a halt. And what, ha what could happen is, that's what the world would be like if we have no data. Because data now runs everything. Might be sad, but that's the situation. Data runs the banks, runs the uh, traffic lights, runs the power stations, runs your cell phone. Without data, none of those things work. So, not to drag this out, but it's been said that World War Three will be over in 10 minutes. Because it's possible someone could control all the data and shut down the entire country, if not the entire world. Now that's rather uh, draconian, but um, just think about it. Without data, nothing works anymore. That's how reliant we have become on data. All right, so now I have you all depressed, let's move on. So what happens if we have bad data? Well, bad data equals bad applications whoops, or bad websites. Um, most of us are taking this course because we're either website developers or we're application programmer and developers. Um, so imagine you design a beautiful website, a beautiful application, the thing looks good, great usability, great use of color, great use of uh, controls, everything's laid out beautifully, but the data on your application or website is wrong. You know, wow. Let's say it's a, a, a student enrollment system. The courses are not there. How do I enroll if I don't have the courses? The course I want is not even listed. Actually, the course I want here, it shows me two different times. It says it's on uh, Monday at 8 a.m. and Monday at 9 a.m in two different locations and two different campuses for the same course. Wow, we have a problem. This, this data is making the entire website look bad. You agree? If the data is not right, no matter how beautifully you designed it, if the data is wrong, what do people think? Wow, don't use that website. Don't use that application. Because trust me, it's terrible. It's not the website, not the application, it's the bad data behind it. So you're going to be judged by how well you do, by how well the data is that feeds the content that you're providing. That's why it's your job as developers or website designers to understand where this data is coming from. All right, I am going to help you understand that in the, in the contents of this course. That's why we're taking this course. All right, so what are our goals for this course? We're going to do several things. We're going to look at data modeling. Data modeling is we're going to ability to create a conceptual entity relationship model. And don't worry about what that means yet. We're going to spend a lot of time this semester discussing entity relationship models. But we have to focus on data modeling. <clears throat> I go as far as to say the most important thing you will do when you design your applications and you design your websites, the most important thing you will do is create the data model behind it. All right, data integrity. We want to design models that eliminate inconsistent data, redundant data, and missing data. 
we will make sure that the data we provide is consistent with everything else they see. If they go see their account value in one place, or they go to another location, they will see that same consistent data. We want to eliminate redundant data. We don't want to store data multiple times. That causes storage problems. It also causes inconsistent data. If we store the data once, then we eliminate two problems, the redundant data part and the inconsistent data part. And the last thing is uh, missing data. We don't want to have data that's not there. People are looking for the courses. We want the courses to be there, even if nobody has enrolled in them yet. Data accuracy. All we can do is in this course is we can design the model. We're going to leave it to the developers to, to handle the accuracy of the data in the model. Okay. Um, and then the other goal for this course later on, for the second half, maybe the last third, will be converting data to information using structured query language or SQL. Okay, this is a skill-based course. There's little or to nothing to memorize. Now, I used to get through school by uh, memorizing things for 24 hours. Memorize it, take the test, and then 24 hours later, I forget about it. Got good grades, but it didn't really stick with me. So I'm not a big fan of memorizing. Nowadays, with resources we have, we can look things up. All right. There is a lot to understand, however. So we need to understand these concepts. We need to understand the terminology so when we use it, we say, oh, I got it. I know what that means. We have several projects in this course. All these projects are skill-based. Again, no, I don't care what you can memorize for 24 hours. That's not relevant. What is relevant, relevant is show me what you can do. It's a skill-based, not knowledge-based, not ability. It's skill-based. So the value here is show me. Show me you can do this. So when you walk out of the door at the end of the semester, you can go out to the workforce and you can do what we're talking about in this course. I'll tell you right now, the course is not easy. It's a lot of terminology, a lot of things. Any one term by itself is simple to understand and got it. But we start piecing all this together, trust me, it gets, it gets confusing. It gets complicated. I'm here to help navigate you to, through this, but you have got to understand the terminology, understand the concept, and understand how to apply it. That burden is on you. We have a lot to learn, so let's go ahead and buckle up. Once you become one with your device, whether it's a keyboard, a mouse, a tablet, whatever you're using, um, become, become one with it. Also, you have two choices here. Either keep up or stay ahead. Either one is fine. What you, not an option is to fall behind. We move quickly in this course. And once a project is submitted, uh, projects are designed to help learn, help you learn for the next project. So projects are submitted. I grade them fairly quickly. Uh, some of them grade themselves, as you'll find out. And I provide the solutions. Once I provide the solution to a project, I can no longer accept a late project. That makes sense, right? Because once I provide the solution, you have the answer. And you can't then show me that you can do it on your own. So be aware of the due dates. Submit stuff on time. Because if you're late and I've already posted the solution, and I cannot accept your grade, and you'll get a zero for it. Um, so, again, things feed other projects. Okay, know what the assignments are. When they're due, give yourself time. Plan wisely. Don't be late. Again, either keep up or stay ahead. Most of the stuff you can stay ahead of. Once we get to SQL, 
you'll have to wait because we use the previous projects for the SQL. But until then, just find a moment to stay ahead, to get ahead, but at least keep up. All right? Trust me, bad things happen to good people. I know, you say, oh, I'm going to do this. This is due Sunday at 12 noon. I'm going to do it at 10 a.m. Sunday. And then at 9 a.m., you get a phone call, and oh, you got to go off to work, or you got to go see about something, or someone needs you. And you go, whoa, now it's 12 noon, it's too late. Plan it. Don't wait till the last minute. Do things. Most things are working out by week. Do things during the week. Set aside time for you to do it. Be diligent about doing that. Do things on time. All right? So now you know what we're doing. And I think it's going to be an exciting course. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to learn a lot. Uh, you have to do the work. I'm here to guide you and navigate. Uh, so let's have a good time. Get a good course. And have a good semester. Take care.